If your solar panels and battery system are more than six years old and you're getting paid for deemed export, you could be losing out on a huge amount of money. So just last year, I was in the position where I had my fit system and my brand new or upgraded solar system. And as I've talked about in a previous video, I worked with my provider to bring the two together so that we had one system and we were paid a percentage on our generation from our fit system. Now, if you don't know what the FIT system is, it probably means you haven't had a solar system for more than about six years. This was a government incentive program that ended in 2019, and that meant that we, those of us that installed solar systems previously were able to benefit from an export payment as well as a generation payment. Now, if you have a system that is more than six years old and you are enrolled in it, and you haven't looked at what you're getting paid for a number of years, you probably have forgotten that you're actually getting paid for two separate things. Firstly, you have your generation number. So you get paid a set amount of money, uh, I believe it's currently about 72 pence per kilowatt hour that you generate, and you get to use that kilowatt hour. You also get paid on the assumption that you're exporting at least 50% of that. So they pay you a few extra pence, and I think it's currently about 4.9 to 5 pence, for every oh, every two kilowatts that you export, um, because they're assuming that you will be exporting it. Now, you don't have to account for this. There's no export metering. It is just taken from the number that you generate, divided by two, and that's what they will pay you on. But have you considered that you might be losing money? This deal seemed great back in 2019. Today, maybe not so good. So let's talk about deemed export. So as I say, deemed export is the part of the FIT program that assumes that you export 50% of what you generate. Now, if you are exporting 50% of what you generate or more, you might want to look at this. If you're actually self-consuming all that power, um, and you're not just self-consuming it because you've got extra power, if you put it into your car, maybe into a hot tub or something like that, then this might not be for you. But if you are exporting large amounts of power, you could probably be getting paid a lot more to be on an export tariff, not on the deemed export. Now, one thing to be very clear here, you can opt out of the deemed export without affecting your generation tariff at all. You can continue to be paid for what you generate and just opt out of the bit that's paying a little bit extra, because that little bit extra might be worth a lot more money to you. Now, there are a couple of caveats here. With deemed export, you don't have to have a smart meter. You can just have a regular old-fashioned meter because they're not actually metering what you export. You will still have your generation meter for what you generate, and they will just take that number, divide it by two, and assume that's what you've exported. If you want to move to an export tariff, you will require a smart meter. So if you don't have a smart meter today, I would highly recommend getting one of those in place because that will allow you to take advantage of not only smart tariffs, but also uh, export as well. Now, let me give you an example here. Let's say you generate four kilowatt hours of energy that you don't use. And you could divert that into your hot water tank uh, and still get paid that deemed export for that four kilowatts. But with an export tariff, you can actually export that four, that four kilowatts, get paid for it. And if you need it later on to heat your hot water, you can buy it back at a lower price. So let's say those four kilowatts, instead of heating your hot water, you can actually export them at 15 pence per unit. That's making 60 pence. Now, later that night, you can buy back those four kilowatts on the cheap rate power, maybe on Octopus Intelligent Go for 7p. So it cost you 28 pence of the 60p that you've made to buy that back, leaving you a profit of 32p. Now, across the course of a month, that £6.40 profit just on heating your hot water, never mind anything else that you might use that energy for. You're effectively using the grid as a battery. Now, that's exactly what I'm doing now. In mid-2024, I got in touch with my FIT provider, a company called Ecotricity, and said, I want to opt out of deemed export. And they went, you want to do what? You want to give away free money? So I actually walked them through an example. And let me give you the example that I gave them. So 
on the screen now, I'm going to put up my microtricity statement for June 2023 to March 2024. Now you can see there, uh, I have an assumed export of 574 kilowatts. They paid me 27 pounds and 61 pence for exporting that energy. In that period, I actually exported 845 kilowatt hours. And if I'd have been on an export tariff at that time, I would have earned 126 pounds 75 for that exported energy. So as you can see, for me, I was getting paid a small amount of money for exporting power, but because I was actually exporting more than they thought I was, it was a significant uplift, almost £100 extra for moving across to this new tariff. So how do you do this? How do you get off of deemed export and get converted over to a, a standard outgoing tariff? Well, there's a couple of steps you need to take. Now, the thing to remember here is your fit provider doesn't have to be your energy company. So for my energy, for as most people on this channel will know, I use Octopus. My fit provider is still Ecotricity. And that's really because in the early days of fit, there weren't that many fit providers around. Ecotricity was my energy company at the time. It seemed like it made a whole load of sense to me. The first thing that they have to do is you have to contact your fit provider, in this case, Ecotricity, or in, in Ecotricity is Microtricity, which is the part of the company that deals with all of this. And that was just done through a simple email. And I asked them to record in the CFR, that's the central fit registry, that I wanted to opt out of deemed export. Now, this took two or three emails just to confirm that I was only opting out of the export part and I wanted to keep the, being paid for the generation part, which was the most profitable part. But a couple of emails exchanged either way, and this is exactly what they did. Now, this took about three weeks. Uh, once it was logged into the CFR that I was opting out, that meant Octopus could then go and register for an export MPAN. An MPAN is a meter ID, and for your import and export, you will have different MPANs. So once they'd applied for an MPAN for my meter, um, this goes into another system called ECOES, or ECHOES, depending on how you pronounce it, the E-C-O-E-S. Um, this is the system that connects the people who measure your meters to the DNO and ultimately to, to your energy company to be able to generate a bill. Now, this took about another four weeks, so I did actually lose out on a little bit of generation. But once the MPAM was set up, it showed up immediately in my Octopus dashboard. And then a bit of chaos started, and it took Octopus about another six weeks till they actually started paying me for export. And by the end of August, I was live on outgoing Octopus, and I started to see uh, generation numbers. So it didn't take a lot of effort on my part. But it certainly meant that, um, you know, lots of things have to be tweaked in the background. I'm sure there's lots of back-end processes. But it was a couple of emails to the fit provider and a couple of emails exchanged with Octopus. And we were all set up, ready to go. So now that I'm not on the deemed export, I'm actually paid for every real unit that I export. And I can still buy power in cheaply because uh, although Octopus have their Octopus outgoing tariff, I still have Octopus Intelligent go for my incoming energy. So I can buy energy in cheaply at night at seven pence a kilowatt, and I can export it later on in the day at 15 pence a kilowatt. And none of this has changed any of the setup of my fit generation account. So I will pop up on the screen now. This is my latest statement. You'll see here I'm getting paid at about 18% of my total generation because I say we've consolidated the systems. If you want to know more about how I did that, um, there'll be a link at the end of this video. But once we consolidate those, it means I get paid 18% of my total generation because you can't increase the size of a fit system. So the new system, the old system was two kilowatts. The new system is about 9.6. It worked out at about 18% of the total I'm still being paid on. But this means that now I earn significantly more for the energy that I generate. And not just the portion that would have been paid for by FIT, I obviously get paid for all of the energy that I generate with the entire system. So the question is, if you're on FIT deemed export, should you do the same? If you export a lot of power, it is worth doing that calculation because if you're not exporting a lot, if your system is kind of sized for your own use and you really don't consume an awful lot, it's better to be paid on what they think you're exporting, but if you are exporting lots of energy, this can be a significant uplift on how much money you can make from your system. So, how to switch. 
Step one, email your fit provider. It's all about the communication. So you will need to give them your fit ID. You'll have to be very clear. Give them a statement that says, I wish to opt out of my deemed export and not my generation tariff. Be very, very clear in that email. You will then have to send them a final generation read so they can make sure that they've paid you everything up to the day that you have opted out of that system. So what I did was I sent them a photograph because they like a photograph every couple of years of the meter, sent them a photograph of the meter, got a response from them that said, yep, this is all good. We will put this into the CFR. Once it had gone into the CFR, I received an email, like I say, about two weeks later, and that allowed me to move on to the next step, which was then getting Octopus to register the MPAN in the ecosystem. That took a couple of weeks, again, a few emails exchanged, and then eventually, once the MPAN had been assigned, you will see that show up in your dashboard, whether it be your Octopus dashboard or if you're with a different provider, um, will show up there, and you will then start getting paid for that energy. Now, there could be a gap in the middle. With me, that gap was about two and a half months between me opting out of one and being enrolled in the other. That was mainly down to some issues inside of Octopus that they didn't really explain very well, but it did mean I lost out on June and July's generation numbers, which uh, could have been quite a significant amount of money, certainly a couple of hundred pounds. But now it's all done. It just works completely seamlessly. So if you're on deemed export, you've got a smart meter, it's now time to check your numbers. You could be missing out on some easy money. I mean, every time the sun shines, four or five pound a day, we're currently sending back into the grid. So it really helps with that energy bill, whereas instead of having a, a, an energy bill that's positive, every single day, my energy bill is decreasing by four to five pounds a day. Now, if you have any questions about this, please do hit me up in the comments. Um, I've tried to explain it as much as I can here. It is a pretty simple process. It is just emails back and forward between the two providers, but you do have to play the man in the middle. You have to you know, get information from one provider and give it to the other. They, they just, for some reason, they wouldn't talk to each other. They would only communicate with me. I don't know if that was a data protection thing, but if you do have questions, hit me up in the comments, more than happy to answer them. Have you changed? I've, have you done exactly what I've done? Have you got off of deemed export and gone to an export tariff? I'd love to hear how it's working out for you. If you're not, if you're happy consuming your energy, again, love to hear from you down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.